Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. You guys said you wanted more reading journal content, so that is exactly what I am bringing you today. We're gonna take a look at my reading journal in November and December, but the format is going to be a little bit different because my reading journal is not something that I sit down and do in one go. I just do a little here and there. I finish a book, I make a spread. Maybe I don't make a spread right away. Maybe I decorate it before I'm even done reading the book. We're gonna be a little bit all over the place today. So just lean back and enjoy. Here we are at the Rose Establishment in Salt Lake City, a cafe that I really like. I came here just a few days after I arrived in the US in November, and it was the first time I'd opened my reading journal since I came here actually. I had a few spreads to make because I had finished both Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, and I hadn't written about my thoughts about them in my reading journal yet. I decorated some of the spreads already because sometimes I like having crafting sessions without worrying about camera angles and lighting, so that's why you won't see everything that I've done in my reading journal the past two months in this video. If you haven't watched my 2022 reading journal setup video yet, I really recommend watching that one first because it explains a lot more about the system I use in my reading journal. I'm currently staying with my partner's family here in Salt Lake, so I don't really have a desk setup or anything, so a lot of the time I go to cafes to work and to journal. So in this video you'll see a few different locations, and I think it's a kind of fun feature that I don't see in other journaling videos, so I'm just embracing it and will be taking you along to a bunch of coffee shops in this video. This way you'll also see a more realistic time lapse, I guess, of how I actually fill in my reading journal. And I'm sure not all of you have like a super aesthetic desk like we see on Pinterest and Instagram, so maybe this feels more familiar? I don't know. I don't really have a strict order or set any rules for myself in my reading journal, so whichever spread I feel like making or filling in is the spread that I will work on. You can see that I skipped over filling in my spread for Crooked Kingdom and went straight to fill in my spread for A Court of Thorns and Roses because I was just so excited about it. I went back and filled in Crooked Kingdom later, but I was really deep into an Aquatar hole at this moment and finished all three books in a row. <laughs> I have a problem when I read novels back to back because they start to blend into each other. Here I am at a coffee shop called Honeysuckle, which is a friendly and relaxed coffee shop just south of Salt Lake City. As I'm flipping through my reading journal, you can maybe see that I decided to use some pen and marker stickers from Sapling Stickers to mark which books in my TBR spread that I've read. At this point, I'd also filled in some of you guys' reading suggestions from the comments on my 2022 reading journal setup video. You can also see that I've started filling in my reading tracker with the days that I read in November, and I'm quite happy with how much I read in November. I did cheat a little bit by including Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom in my November spreads because technically I read at least the first one in October, but it was just easier to include them in November because I wanted to make spreads for them. I also read A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas, which was excellent by the way, and I also included A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, although I've actually been reading through this book very slowly over several months. I just finished it yesterday as I am recording this and it completely broke me. My friend Hannah lent me this book. Uh, I think over the summer, and it's taking me a while to get through. But I finally finished it. It's a really heart-wrenching book. So the next step for me was to make my December cover page. This notebook that I'm using is from Archer and Olive, and it has both white craft and black paper in it in sections. You will have noticed at the beginning of the notebook I, it had white paper, and now I'm in a craft section. Come January, I will probably be well into the first black paper section, which will be fun and a little different. I really like it so far and I would absolutely recommend it for the variety of paper. 
You can always get 10% off your purchase at Archer and Olive with my affiliate code MuchiBujo10 if you ever want to make a purchase from them. So anyway, the cover page for December, I make cover pages for each month primarily to separate the book spreads so that my reading journal isn't just a huge chunk of book spreads. This way I can easily see which books that I read each month too, to see if I had a good reading month or a bad one. Some months I take more time to read and other months less, which is completely normal. I really wanted to use this Magical Girl sticker from Marigona Suli Art, as well as some pink and yellow book stickers also from the same artist. I'll leave a link to her shop in the description because she has so much pretty stationery. I also used scrapbook paper and washi tape from Notebook Therapy, which you will have seen me use a lot in my new bullet journal setup video as well. I kept the left page pretty simple with the Magical Girl and the December title, and then the right page will hold the books I am reading in December. I don't always set up my monthly cover page before the month starts. Most times I make it in the middle or even at the end because I can't know for sure how many books I will read in one month. However, since I was still working my way through A Little Life and I'd already started reading A Court of Wings and Ruin when I set up the spread, I figured I'd probably read two more books in December, meaning I'd only need room for three books on this page. Should I end up having time for a fourth one, I can always add another label to this page or even move it to January. It's not really the end of the world for me. Some people might be very strict about this, but I want my reading journal to be a fun place. <laughs> I was really excited about using these stickers and setting up more spreads in my reading journal so I just couldn't help myself and I had to set up the spread early. I've seen other people make a little TBR list on their monthly cover page and then have another section where they write a list of the books they actually read that month and I think that that is a great idea as well. I might try it for January but at the same time I try not to make too many plans for books I'm reading. I'm an emotional reader, so I usually pick my next book depending on the mood that I'm in. Usually that mood is, OMG, I want to read more young adult fantasy. <laughs> but I also try to mix in other genres in between. Like now, for example, I did tell myself to read a few other books before reading A Court of Frost and Starlight, even though I feel like just starting all of the Alcatar books all at once. The labels I'm using on this spread are from Olinka Studio and I'm also using some stamps and washi tape from Notebook Therapy to decorate. I love all of my Notebook Therapy washi tapes and stamps and I'm even using one of their notebooks as my new bullet journal. You can get 10% off your order from Notebook Therapy with my affiliate code MuchiBujo10 as well. I think that this spread turned out super cute and I'm really happy I finally had the perfect spread for these pink and yellow stickers. It is my favorite color combination after all, and they look really nice on the craft paper background. One great thing about craft paper is that both black and white pens show up really well, so I made some sparkles over the entire spread using both black and white pens, which I think really added to the spread and made it all come together. And then the snow finally came to Salt Lake City. Jordan and I went to a place called La Barba Coffee, which I had never been to before, but I was pleasantly surprised. It was a lovely place to spend the first snow day of the winter. If you pay attention to the dates, you'll see that I usually fill in my reading journal maybe once a week. This day I had actually forgotten my glue tape at home, which was a problem since I glue so much stuff into my journal, but I took on the challenge to make a whole spread without using glue because I do have a lot of stickers and washi tape, so using glue tape doesn't have to be necessary. This spread is for Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, which has been on my TBR list for quite some time. It's a split spread with both craft and black paper, and I think that's a super fun look. I used some stickers from Leela Journals and washi tape that my pen pals have sent me. The grid washi tape I actually got in my advent calendar that day. In case you missed it, Kat from Kat's Planner and I made each other advent calendars this year. So I've been opening one gift from her every day in December. You can watch what I'm gifting her in my video and then you can check out what she's gifting me in her video. I haven't watched her video because I want it all to be a surprise, so no spoilers please. But anyway, back to the spread. I don't have specific things that I need to include in every book spread except for the title of the book and the author. 
Sometimes I'll include how many pages the book is if I read a physical copy or how many hours it was if I listened to the audiobook. Sometimes I'll include a quote or two that I really like, but other times I'll just write my thoughts on the book. I mostly write in Norwegian in my reading journal, just because it's the language that comes most naturally to me. I also do a lot of talking and writing in English, so I want to make sure I do at least some writing in Norwegian, so if you can't understand what I'm writing in my reading journal, that's probably why. If it's not already clear from this video, I love to read, but I don't always have the time or the capacity to sit down and read the physical books, and a lot of the time I listen to audiobooks. I can listen to audiobooks when on public transport, when driving, when on a walk, and my favorite thing to do is fall asleep to an audiobook. That's like falling asleep to someone telling you a story, it doesn't get much better than that. Just remember to turn on the sleep timer so that the audiobook doesn't play all night. If you'd ask me which of the spreads in my reading journal have been the most useful to me so far, I'd say all of them. Keep in mind that I just set up this journal a couple of months ago, so I haven't really had time to grow out of any of the spreads or anything. I fill in the tracker when I remember to, and although I still have many books on my TBR list, I think some of the suggestions you guys gave me for good books to read this year will move ahead in line, because you suggested some really good looking books. I'm not really interested in making long videos talking about the books that I read because there are entire channels dedicated to just talking about books and I don't really want my channel to turn into a book channel, but I don't mind giving you a quick overview of what I've read recently in this kind of journal video format. And if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to talk about, leave suggestions or requests in the comments and I'll keep it in mind for next time. I did ask you guys over on my community page if there was something you'd like me to talk about this time around, and a lot of you asked about challenges, so I have included a reading challenge in this video and you'll see it very soon. Also, I am breaking the cycle of only making one reading journal video per year with this video, so that's a major development. I'm thinking I can try to make a reading journal video every other month or so, and I can talk about the books that I've been reading and the spreads that I've made, as well as my progress on my yearly challenge, which again I'll get to in a bit. I really like how the spread turned out and I can't wait to fill it in. I am still reading through the book, so I won't fill the spread in quite yet. I'll use my white jelly roll to write on the black page and I think it will look really nice. Same cafe, different angle. Here I am filling in my spread for A Court of Wings and Ruin, the third book in the Aquatar series. I went for pink colors to kind of match the December cover page, although I'll be honest, I don't really care about themes in my reading journal. I reserve themes for my bullet journal and my reading journal is a do whatever you want whenever you want kind of journal. I find that the less pressure I put on myself, the more I'll enjoy the thing I'm doing. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> That's also why I haven't shared as much from my reading journal online in the past, because I worried it would put added pressure on me as a creator of online content, but I'm going to try for now, and if I end up not liking it, then I'll reevaluate my decision to share more. It's as simple as that. Anyway, as a little recap, the book spreads that I have filled in so far in my reading journal are for Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo, A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, and A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Maas. And then I am still filling in my spreads for a little life and before the coffee gets cold because I'm not quite done with before the coffee gets cold and I haven't had time to sit down and reflect on a little life yet. In a way I don't think one spread is really enough for a little life. The next books on my list is A Court of Frost and Starlight and then probably a book that will count towards my 2022 challenge which I will be setting up and showing you right now. Here I am at a coffee shop called Athena Cafe and Bistro and it was getting dark so the lighting isn't the best but let me show you the challenge that I made for myself for 2022 and how I set up a spread for it. I decided to call my 2022 reading challenge Around the World in One Year. I've seen various versions of this kind of challenge around the internet but I decided to just make my own because I don't do well with following challenges that I feel force me to do a certain thing. So anyway, this challenge is about reading books by authors from different parts of the world. Their books don't have to be set in that part of the world necessarily, but the author should be based there. Now obviously there aren't enough continents to do one continent a month, so I gave some continents some extra attention. 
For example, I will only challenge myself to read one book from North America because I already read a bunch of books from North America, so it's not that big of a challenge. I will try to choose a book by an author either from Mexico or Canada when I get to this part of the challenge. I gave Africa two months, so that means I'll read at least two books by African authors. I gave two months to Europe, but I will try to focus on Eastern and Southern Europe for this because I haven't really read any books by Eastern European authors since I read The Witcher books, which are Polish. I gave two months to Asia and I'll try to choose books from Southeast and West Asian authors because I already read East Asian authors quite regularly. I also gave two months to South America because I think there's a lot to explore there and I don't think I've ever read a book by a South American author. And then I gave one month to Oceania and then this one might be a bit surprising to you but I did one month for Nordic authors and that's mainly because I want to read more books set in the environment that I grew up in. So Nordic would be Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, Icelandic, Finnish or Faroe authors. There's a lot to choose from. So that's the main outline of the challenge. Now you could definitely pair each section with a month but I'm going to keep it quite open so that I can choose which continent to focus on for each month and maybe even do two sections in one month. Like I mentioned before, I am an emotional reader and I don't particularly like reading books that I feel forced to read. That's probably trauma from being a student for literally 20 years. I'm 28 now, so that's over two thirds of my life. Jokes aside, I loved reading in school when I was a kid. My teachers did a great job of letting us pick books from the library to read in class by ourselves and also bring home when I was in like elementary and middle school. I'm sure it wasn't great for everyone, but for me it was the best time, that and art class. So that explains most about my 2022 reading challenge. I know that it was highly requested that I talk about reading challenges and how to track it, and this spread is how I will track mine. I will write the names of the books and authors in their designated frame. The section for Africa is so large because I'm fitting two books in there, and that's why there are 11 frames and not 12. I used what I had, I didn't have 12 identical frames to use, so I just used whatever. I think it turned out quite nice. I used some washi tape from Murenkunst shop, I used the girl stickers from La Dolce Vita studio, and then the rest is actually just things that I have received from my pen pals. All of the frames I have received from pen pals, all of the stamps, and I used the stamps to kind of signify the around the world theme and then I also used a bunch of coffee stickers that I got from Kat's planner in her advent calendar. So I guess the theme is kind of travel and coffee. If you're doing a reading challenge for 2022 let me know what kind of challenge it is and if you're doing a similar challenge to mine let me know. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was quite a long one, so if you're still here, please put a globe emoji in your comment and pick the one that corresponds with where in the world you are because that's fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. My next video will be my January bullet journal setup and it will be the last video I make for 2021. And if you haven't checked out my 2022 bullet journal setup video yet, you should go do that. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!